Hi, it's Steph here from the Bead Shop in Nottingham. Um, today I'm going to show you a quick little project, um, how to make this really stunning bracelet. It's really tactile, feels great. Um, it's a good project for beginners because it's mostly um, threading rather than complicated bead weaving, which is one of the nice things about using the lovely two hole beads because they often make projects look far more complicated than they actually are, which is always a bonus. Um, and it also incorporates the lovely finding symbols so um, this one is the Comia gem duo uh, ending I think I'm pronouncing that right um, but basically the symbol findings um, have been designed to go really well with a lot of the um, two hole shaped beads so they fit perfectly they're the same dimensions and they finish off your jewellery brilliantly and I think often it's the, the fastening off and sort of beading on ends um, or adding in class to um, projects like this that can feel a little daunting for beginners. So by having a, an element that um, does a lot of the hard work for you, um, it's a great way to um, get into beading. And it, I think it just looks fantastic on. Um, so I think it's a great little project. So we'll get started. So because the bracelet is quite flat, when it comes to calculating um, how big you need to make your bracelet, um, we can actually make this pretty accurate. Now, if you already know the um, diameter of your wrist, great, use that measurement. Um, if you're not sure, one of the easiest ways to do it is to take a piece of cord or something um, that you can wrap around your wrist and make sure it's not cutting off the blood circulation, you know, you can move it around, but also not too big. And then use a ruler and actually measure that. So that's come out at 15 and a half centimetres for me. I do have little wrists. Um, I know that the exact tight circumference is 14 and a half for me. So I probably want to make it 15. Um, so we don't want the beading to be the full length because um, our clasp is going to take up a little bit of space. That's approximately two centimetres. Um, but equally, we don't want the bracelet to be too snug. Um, I think more often than not, people go a little bit overcautious and make their bracelets too long. With this bracelet, because we're going to be working sort of back and forth um, as we go, there isn't a case of just oh, taking off a few beads at the end. We need to actually calculate from the start what that length we need it to be. So I have already worked out my, my bracelet really needs to be at least 15, if not 15 and a half centimetres finished length. So taking off two centimetres from that is going to be 13 and a half centimetres and if you like your bracelet a little loose, then maybe add on a little bit, but don't add on too much. So if I made a 14 centimetre piece length of beading, I know that once I've added the clasp on, that's going to be just about right. It's not going to be too tight, not going to be too loose. So I'm actually going to make a note of that because the amount of times you think, oh, I'll remember that. And then when you come to it, like, was that 15 or 14? So I'm just jotting that down. So I need to do... 14 centimetres of actual beading. So now we can get started. Now we've established the length. So, and the Gem Duo colours I'm using. Uh, so, this is the lovely backlit one that's going to go down the middle of my bracelet. And it is the backlit one, and it's actually aqua pink this colour. Um, I think because in certain lights you get kind of a bit of a um, iridescent or pur purpley colour but I think it, it's just lovely this one it's more of like a definitely aquary like Mediterranean Sea it's lovely and then to tie in with that um, I've gone for um, black azuro so this is um, a black bead so the back of the gem duos on these are completely opaque black and then the front has the iridescent blue on so they go very nicely with these and just tone in that blue shade. So it's really easy with both of these to identify the front and the back because the backlit ones always have the silver backing which is part of the reason why they almost look like they're glowing lovely. And then the blue ones have a completely black. Also Gem Duos do have a flat back so the back is completely smooth and flat and then the front 
is ever so slightly domed almost with a slight pronounced ridge down the front so you can tell and there is definite front and back there the reason i'm highlighting that is because it becomes very important for the next bit so i do need to get out all my beads um to begin with we're only going to be using the what are going to be the outer edge ones and um, to begin with and the three mil zillion beads so for these i'm using the color comet argent light and they are unbelievably sparkly as you can see um, they're a special coated bead from Swarovski um, and they're just one coating so that means that half the bead is coated which I think you can see there so again that is slightly important it's not terribly important which way around you pick them up but I quite like to try and keep it consistent so when I thread my needle through I'm going to be threading through um, from the shiny side out of the not so shiny side if that makes sense so you can see one side's got the coating on and one side's just sparkly so now we can get started i'm using wildfire for this um it's a good um it's 0.15 millimeters uh, it's a good thickness of um thread and because there's not going to be lots of weaving round and round and round we want something that's got, got a little bit more structure to it and um, so we can also roughly calculate how much thread we're going to need so my bracelet is going to be 14 um, centimeters and we're going to have thread that runs through it back and forth um, four times so you can see on the, this little bit here so there's going to be one thread there one thread there one thread there one thread there so I know I need to make it at least 14 times 4 so if like me you're not any good at mental arithmetic on the top of your off the top of your head if you've got a ruler in front of you what I tend to do is err on the cautious side so I'm just pulling out a bit of the thread and then that's where 14 is I'm going a little bit further and then I'm going to pull that across four times so one two three four so I know that's given I've given myself a little bit extra and then it doesn't hurt to be a little bit generous with these things I'm going to cut out cut a little bit longer and um, mainly because with a project like this it's far easier to trim off a little bit of excess than it is to try and add in a little bit more thread right at the very end so we do need to leave ourselves enough of a tail so about 10 centimeters um, so that we can actually fasten that off securely at the end so I'm just using a bead stopper on there and now we can add a needle and start threading our beads now you could actually calculate because we know the length we need how many beads um, you need before we get started however I always like to just get threading and then test as we go so what I'm going to do now we're going to be starting with the um, Jetta Zero which is my outside edge bead and um, because I need to make sure that all of these are facing the right way what I'm going to do is just flip all the beads over so their coated side is already facing upwards which will just make life a lot easier you don't have to think about it every time you pick up a bead and then as long as when I'm scooping up a bead I'm always going through the be the hole that's closest to me and um, then they'll all end up lining up so even if you've got one face sideways flip it round and then just scoop it through the hole closest to you with the face upwards and it'll always work out right so super duo sorry not super duo they're gem duos gem duo zillion bead gem duo zillion bead and then we're basically going to keep going alternating these two beads until we're roughly the determined measurement on our ruler so for me 14 centimeters so I'm going to just keep going threading these I'll probably speed this little bit of the film up just so you're not having to just hang around waiting for me if it's going too fast at any point you can always pause or wait until I've um, wait until we're back synced again so I'm going to just carry on so gem duo 
Zillion, Gem Duo Zillion, all the way across. Right, so it's a good idea to keep checking the length of your beading. As you know, may have noticed, I ended up getting a bit carried away and I took one bead off at the end there. So I've lined these up and this now measures almost spot on 14 centimetres. So this now determines the overall length of my bracelet. So this is the top edge of the bracelet, so to speak. So um, they're all nicely lined up. What we're going to be adding next is the little backlit ones in between. So this will form the centre of the bead. And the nice thing about the gem duos is you can see just how perfectly they're all just going to slot in together. So these will all fit in really nicely. Um, it does get a little bit fiddlier now because we're going to be having to make sure that we capture both the gem duo from this top row and then the next gem duo new gem duo and then thread them through what can happen which you need to look out for is sometimes some of these beads flip over out of the way so you might think you're going through the next one but actually it's um flipped out of the way so just want to be careful and look out for that so we're going to just keep going so first of all i'm going to thread back through the what was the last bead added of the gem duos from the first row so I'm going to pull that through and pull my thread all the way through so the beads don't move around so much there we go. and now I can start picking these up again if you flip over your beads so they're all facing the right way and um, this time I need to be going through the hole furthest away from me to make sure they line up here so I sometimes find this easier to pick pick up the beads and sort of manhandle your beadwork um, and pin it down to the bead mat so you can see what, what's happening and the beads are behaving. They do have a terrible habit of um, just going where they want to go rather than where you want them to go. So don't worry about that. So every time you pick one up, you're going to anchor through and you'll soon get into the swing of things. I'm just going to move that out of the way so it stops getting caught up so there we go and you want to keep your tension fairly firm so that you don't end up with loose bits but um, it'll be very easy to pull this up at, towards the end of the bracelet as well if you need to so you can see there how all the beads are slotting in between there and you just keep on going all the way across so again I'll speed this bit up for you but go at your own pace and you can always pause me, stop me, rewind me, whatever you need to do to get to the, the right point.
right so at this stage it's sometimes easier to remove your bead stopper so you can see what's happening i'm going to be adding just one more of the middle beads here so i've got one loose gem duo from the first row up there i'm going to add just one more of the middle oh wrong hole there we go so through there and i just want to make sure that i don't slide off the end there so hang on to that and you can usually check at this stage that everything's lining up nicely so you don't haven't missed any beads um, if you pulled your threads really tight it would create a bit of a curve but we don't need to that's nice and relaxed you can see there's no no gaps there and now you want to make sure that your working thread which is the longest one is coming out of the bottom of that top set of gem duos and the reason for that is that at this stage is where we add on the really useful symbol bead so you can see here so unlike the gem duos where the holes go um vertic uh, sort of horizontally through like that in two holes this one has just one hole and it goes straight the way through there so which means you can thread it on with the hole through here and you don't end up with bits of thread on the outside so to add it you simply take your needle all the way through these are the same on the front and back so you don't need to worry about getting it the right way round that's going to slot on there and it will act in the same shape as the middle beads have all the way along so that is now ready for us completing the rest of the row now i am right-handed so i find it easier to pick up my beads scooping towards the left the because that middle row was added in that way if i was to go backwards it'd feel a little bit awkward doing it with my left hand so all i'm going to do is simply flip all of the beading round now if you're left-handed you might have found you needed to do that on the previous row and now this row is all good for you whichever works for you it is absolutely fine but it's the same process either way and sometimes come across people on workshops who are very ambidextrous and would just swap hands anyway so it's whatever works for you and everybody's different and there's no wrong and right way so don't need any more of those back clip ones i'm just going to move those out of the way but i do need some more of the jettas euro ones out so that's my tube here we go and the last row which is the third row actually it's not quite the last row and um, the third row is fitting in the gem duos so where on this row we were adding the come out and light between we're not quite at that stage yet so what we are going to be doing is threading through the lower hole of the gem duos here and anchoring through the hole of the backlit ones in the middle so if you face them all upwards it will make your life easier again Yeah, enough to get me started and this time you're going to go through the hole which is closest to you oh, look, that one has a slightly blocked hole let's poke that out if you do come across a um, bead where your needle doesn't want to go through straight away sometimes it's just as a tiny little blockage and if you poke your needle in through from the other side it often sorts it out just like that one there so it's just little bits of um, glass and grit from the making process and um, so I've just poked that through very occasionally you get a pesky bead that doesn't have a hole um, those you'll just have to cast to one side or use them in another project for something um, it's a good idea particularly if it's something that is very very time consuming to double check all your um, beads do have two clear holes before you start putting them into a project but this is quite a quick project so I haven't gone through and checked every single one um, if you come across a hole like that one uh, that was a bit blocked I would try and block it before just opting for the other hole in case it 
it can't be unblocked. Right, so let's get started with this row. So this is the third row and I'm going to pick up my new Jet Azura one and then go through the backlit one in the middle. Again, if I tend to pin my beading down with my finger just to help with stopping everything from moving around too much. There we go. So you can start to see the pattern coming together there and then you just keep on going. So I'm going to pick up a new Jet Azuro through the backlit and keep going. It's going to be harder for these ones to flip um, over and out of the way because they're held in place by the previous row. So it does make it a little bit easier. And again, I'll speed this up, but go at the, your own pace. Right, so we've got to almost the end again here, but you can see there's a bead missing at the end there. So this third row finishes with a gem duo. And at this stage, we can also add on the other symbol finding. So this is slightly uh, more fiddly, um, but only because it, um, when we came to the end at this stage we weren't at the point where we could add that in before so now we can so we need to thread through the symbol so in the same way that we did before so through that straight hole there you can see where it's going to sit but we need to make sure that it gets anchored into the right place and also we need to get back to the right place to finish our final row so the way to do that, and I'm going to pick this up to make it easier for everyone to see. So it's going to sit in this space here. I often find holding things into position you want them to eventually end up is easier to see where you need the needle to go next. I'm going to try and get a good amount of light on there. So I'm going to anchor through this gem duo here, followed by that backlit one in the middle there. So I'm going through those two beads. I'm going to pull my thread through, get that tight. So because we've not fastened off that beginning thread yet, it's just slackening off a little bit. So I'm just going to pop the bead stopper back on there to stop it from moving around too much. So we are coming out of this gem duo here. Um, so that's now attached and we just need to make sure that we're getting this thread back round to over here. So to do that you need to go through the other hole in that gem duo and also if it, it might naturally want to go through as well anyway but the gem duo on the edge here, so that one and that one, which will end up leaving a small amount of thread, which will be hardly visible around the outside of that middle gem duo there. So it's very subtle and it will all get hidden. So at this point, if any of your uh, tension is a little bit loose, you can pull that up now because you don't want to end up doing that final row and um, not be able to carry on 
uh, will fix the tension. So just pulling that thread up so there's no gaps at this end here. And now to get us to the right point to be able to finish this final fourth row, um, we're going to do the same as we did with this bead and go around the outside of the gem duo. So it's just simply, we're coming out of the hole here and we're gonna go into the hole at the edge. And now we are in the right place to be able to add all the zillion beads in this final row. So you can see it's already very much getting there. So this is going to be fairly straightforward because we're just going to be picking up one zillion bead and then through the next gem duo all the way across. So again, I'm trying to pick them up um, through the shiny side really doesn't matter and I don't think you would notice on a project like this just something that I just like to do so just one in every gap again I've just turned my bracelet round to make it easier for me being right-handed to pick up and thread through but whatever works for you right I'll speed this bit up again Right, so got to the very end, I've added in all those zillions. So it's now looking and, and feeling quite nice. So actual um, texture of the base that's quite nice as well. So you have to be careful here because you could, if you pulled up the tension, you could actually make it sort of go a bit ripply, um, which I mean, it could create a nice effect, but I was aiming for a, a flat, flat bracelet um, that wears a bit more relaxed. So all we have to do now is finish off um, our threads and then add the clasp. So the slightly fiddly bit here I always find is not pulling the tension up too tight. So I need to get my thread to a bit more of a discreet area. And so I'm just threading that into the middle. So I've just gone across the top of that gem duo bead and down two beads to here. So what I'm gonna do, keeping my tension loose, make sure this gets in focus. So the thread that's going running between this bead here and the next bead, I'm going to take my needle just underneath there. And that's going to create a loop of thread here. And I'm going to take my needle through that in the same direction that I was heading. It's called a, a half hitch knot. So I'm now just going to pull that knot so that it slides nice and tight around the thread between those two beads. I'm then going to do exactly the same again. So I'm going to thread through the next two beads, tie another half hitch knot so that's underneath the thread between the bead I'm exiting and the next bead. And then that loop of thread that's created, take my needle through there and pull tight. So that's now two knots holding that thread in place. That's probably sufficient. So I'm going to just weave through 
a few more beads so just straight down the middle because it's nice and discreet there no one can really see the knots and maybe another couple of beads and then I can trim off that end of thread you never cut off the thread directly next to a knot because it, the chances are that with just a little bit of wiggling that knot could come undone so regardless of however many knots you do always thread through a few extra beads before trimming off the thread I'm going to snip that thread off and then I'm going to attach my needle to the other end so this was the very beginning so the tail end there which is why we left enough to be able to fasten off so i've got my needle on there now and we're going to do exactly the same thing again trying not to affect the tension so i'm going to take that through around the top of that gem duo bead there and then through the next one so that is down two beads I'm not pulling the tension so that the bracelet stay nice and flat which is good and then underneath the thread between this bead and this bead and then that little loop that's created you thread through there so that's our first half hitch in our tail end and then through the next two beads And the same again so under that thread and then through the loop now if you're struggling if your tail's not quite long enough you can always take the tail end so the eye of the needle through the loop and it will still give you the same effect of tying that knot sometimes it just makes it a little bit easier if you've got a short piece of thread so that's two knots now in this end and then I'm going to thread through several more beads before cutting it off. If you feel like your knots aren't secure or that you just for peace, your own peace of mind you want to add more knots, that's absolutely fine. Um, I'm pretty confident two knots will be sufficient, but I often do three in a lot of projects. So it is up to you. Or if you have another preferred method of fastening off threads, then please feel free to use that. This is just the way I tend to do things. Right, and now I can snip that end off as well. So all that is left to do is to add the clasp and the jump rings on there. So I will just grab my pliers. I'm using a trigger clasp you could use a toggle clasp or your preferred clasp of choice in an ideal world I'd do this with another pair of pliers the only ones I have are round nose with me so they will do um, I would do this with two pairs of chain nose so just give that a wiggle just, you're aiming just to not have a gap so there we go that is now secure and then on the other side you just add a jump ring so I'm going to twist always twist your jump rings open rather than pulling them apart just makes them more secure and stops them from distorting there we go so that is your finished bracelet and I think it looks really effective and it's not a terribly complicated um, design it is really stringing more than actual bead weaving but that's often simple is often the most effective I think with these things and it really um, highlights the gem duo beads brilliantly and having those symbol findings um, to help finish off 
your bracelet and make it look professional is just a, a really wonderful bonus um, and I think they're absolutely fantastic for these sorts of projects. So if you do make um, your own bracelet, do feel free to share it with us on our social media platforms. If you share us with the hashtag The Bead Shop Nottingham, it just makes it easier for us to find you. And um, we'd love to see what you make and which colours you choose. Right, that's it from me today. Bye for now.